So now I'm going to head back into InfoWorks 360 where we're going to bring all of our civil 3D modeling, our utility design modeling and our Revit models into the one integrated environment. So what we've done is we've started by creating a new proposal and we're going to begin by bringing in some of our data sources. We're going to link directly to our civil 3D data. In this case, we're going to bring in our final design model, our final ground, and hit close and refresh. And as we do, you can see the underlying ground data being formed to take that of the final civil 3D model. Now what we need to do is actually import the civil 3D corridors and automatic coverage areas. So in this case, we're only going to select the top surface, the roadways, and the coverage areas. We'll begin by configuring our coverage areas. Now this is an automatic process handled by InfoWorks 360 in that we use style rules to drive the actual texturing of, of the surface. So what this is doing is actually linking back to the Civil 3D model. So any changes we make to our Civil 3D model from now on, we simply reflect those in our InfoWorks 360 model. We can configure roads to bring in our top surface line marking and we assign it a null style. Now we're going to start to bring in our coverage areas for our parking layouts. So first up we're going to bring in our car parking roadway models. We're going to assign it as a coverage area. As you can see, it's highlighted, but we haven't assigned a style to it yet. This is where we set up our style rules. And in our style rules, we're setting up a manual pavement. We run those rules, and that'll automatically get applied to the entire model. Next up are our concrete hard stand areas. Once again, we assign them as a coverage area. We set the external ID to layer so that we can assign those to the style rules. Next up, we'll bring in our vegetation. In this case, we're going to use a manual style of manicured grass. And lastly, we'll bring in our line marking strings. These require a little more configuration. They're still treated as coverage areas. But in this case, we need to go and perform a few extra operations to get it to work. In our table, we have to come and set some parameters. We'll change the color to a standard white. But we need to add some generalization. We need to elevate them slightly off the existing surface so we can see them. And most importantly, we need to add a buffer. This is actually going to cater for the width of the actual line markings themselves. You can see they haven't shown up in the drawing, we just need to adjust them in the surface layers to bring them to the top. And here we can actually see it being built up layer by layer. There's our design terrain, our coverage areas, utilities and light poles, buildings, plant models, the addition of city furniture, and finally vegetation. 